voit sur des exemples anciens. You can see in the samples from the houses of the 18th century, the wallpaper from that time has aged well, whereas those from the 20th century are really very worn. Sont très très abîmés. Wallpapers like these, for example, will be used to restore existing pieces in a museum. And then there are private buyers who purchase them. They sell across the entire globe. In Paris's Bastille district, one young graphic designer is recreating an exceptional wallpaper. Highly decorated sheets that have been known for four centuries as papier dominoté, block printed paper. Here we have two examples of this paper from the 17th century, with both its floral and arabesque design, and then here with a geometric pattern. You see that these examples from the 18th century are really very modern, very graphic. You can hardly believe that it was wallpaper like this that was used to decorate furniture and objects. This restorer strictly respects the traditional production methods. The sheet of paper is first of all printed on a metal plate, then run through the press before it's painted. In the beginning, they were painted either purely by hand or to make things quicker, they would use stencils. You can see traces of the stencil here. I'm not talking about imperfections, but rather little marks, small differences in the traces of brush strokes, which means that each sheet stands out and each paper is unique. The colors are really simple. We have ochre for the yellows, earthy tones for the reds, and finally blues. The palette is very simple. All the papers are painted with the same spectrum of colors. Forgotten for years, this type of wallpaper is making a big comeback. Jean-Baptiste's contemporary designs suit the taste of his customers from around the world. Today, though, it's a client from Paris that's ordered one of his colorful creations. It's meticulous work, like any kind of assembly job. When you're putting the paper up, you have to pay real attention to what you're doing. Unlike modern-day wallpaper, which comes in a roll, this paper is pasted onto the wall, sheet by sheet. Because it's very elastic, once it's wet, it can stick to the wall, even if it has imperfections. It's a really beautiful quality paper, which is going to last a very long time. This precious paper is made far from the capital, in the western Charente region in the 17th century building, France's only surviving paper mill. Jacques Brejou is teaching his apprentice Amandine all the techniques that have been passed down from the craftsmen who worked under Louis XIV. He's been collecting offcuts of hemp and linen to turn into paper for 40 years. Oh, there's a good chance that's a shirt, a nightshirt even. And that, everything over there is treasure from the war. It can take a hundred years from the moment the hemp fibers are picked up until the moment these rags arrive here to me. Once they're torn into strips, the rags are then crushed in this 400-year-old machine known as a Dutch stamping trough, which Jacques has brought back to life. This is how the pulp is made. There's a real smell and a texture that's different, but it's natural. The pulp is then plunged into water to loosen and spread out the fibres. Lower it, lower it, now bring it back up out of the water and now very gently shake it so it's not too dry, but just a little bit. Amandine is making her first ever sheet of paper. It requires lots of concentration, and you only realize that when you're in the middle of making it. You can't do it any other way, it's not possible. And you really grasp what he's telling you when you're doing it. The water is then squeezed out of the paper using this press. 
Let's check the transparency. So here we have a paper that is almost perfect in terms of its transparency. That's delightful. The paper now has to hang for three days in this drying room, when it'll be finally ready for the artist brush.